perhaps it's Christmas Day and you're finishing off the service with O Come All Ye Faithful and everybody's singing at the top of their voice. There's 500 people in the church. As loud as the organ is, it is possible for it to be drowned out by very strong singing. And that's potentially disastrous because without one person, that is the organist leading the tempo, the hymn may just fall apart as people lose time with one another and lose time with the organ. So it is very important that your registration responds to the volume of singing. And if the singing is very strong, the organ needs to be even stronger. So this is the final verse of O Come All Ye Faithful, Christmas Day. On this organ, even if I have all the stops pulled out, if the church is full, I'm still going to find it just a little bit difficult to control the tempo of the congregation. Because even with full organ, they still are going to be very, very loud. It's not a competition, of course, but it is important that you keep a rein on the tempo. So it's important that you play at a very precise and very steady tempo, and also that you play with a very deliberate articulation. And one of the ways that you can help to control the tempo of a hymn, particularly if you're finding it difficult to match the volume of the congregation, is you can use more detached articulation, which will be easier for your singers to feel. So here I'm going to use full grate, all the way up to mixture and trumpet. I'm going to use full swell all the way up to the 16 foot reed, all the pedal stops and the couplers. And I'm going to play a few bars of this very, very well known Christmas hymn. I'm going to play it with the kind of articulation that I might use on Christmas Day when I really need to control the congregation's tempo. I need to use that kind of detached articulation, slightly detached, not quite staccato, but quite detached. Because in a big registration like that, if you play too legato, you're going to produce a very syrupy effect, which doesn't really have any sense of rhythm. So you need to use your articulation, particularly in a very loud, thick registration, in order to keep the rhythm very clear. Now, the most important thing about playing hymns is that you can provide a strong and effective lead to your congregation. But not all of us will spend our time accompanying congregational hymns. We may perhaps accompany small groups, small choirs, even occasionally solo singers. In that case, we need to be a bit more creative with our registration, again, to respond ultimately to the type of singing we're accompanying. If you're accompanying a solo singer, you want something that is supportive, but not something that overwhelms the singer's own voice. One of the things that's very useful for accompanying solo singers is the swell box. Because even if you put on, for example, eight foot and four foot diapasons, you can close the swell box and you can make quite a quiet sound. Your singer may still find that too loud or too distracting, in which case you might just want to use eight and four foot flute, if you have it. Sometimes it's quite nice for contrast to play a verse on manuals only with no pedal. This relieves what can be sometimes a slightly monotonous effect of the 16-foot pedal stop all the way through, particularly if it's a loud pedal stop or a heavy one. It might be particularly appropriate in a gentle verse of a hymn, particularly a hymn that has otherwise had quite strong registrations. 
I have here the hymn, There is a Green Hill Far Away, which is very often used on Good Friday, one occasion on which we want to have gentle and introspective organ accompaniments rather than bright and brash ones. You might like to use a subtle registration like eight and four foot flute on the grape perhaps. Remember even at an occasion like Good Friday where you might want to have very gentle hymn accompaniments you still need to make sure that your accompaniment leads the congregation and keeps them in time. So you could use eight and four foot flute to play a verse of this. Now, if you're used to playing these hymns with pedals all the time, sometimes it can be actually much more tricky just to play with manuals only. In which case, you can just couple the manual to the pedal and just knock off your 16 foot pedal stop and you can still play with a manual's only effect, but you don't have the effort of trying to stretch your left hand over the two parts. Another effect that can be quite nice, although it needs to be used sparingly, is to solo out the melody in the right hand. This is much more effective when you use it, for example, as an introduction or perhaps as an interlude it's not so effective accompanying a congregation because the sudden appearance of the melody on its own with a lighter accompaniment can be not very supportive to a congregation, but it can be a very nice effect, particularly for an introduction. You might like to use a very quiet accompanimental registration in which you play the alto and tenor parts in the left hand, the bass line and the pedal, and then on a solo stop in the right hand on a different manual, you can play the melody something like this. It's a nice effect, but perhaps not one to use when you're accompanying a congregation, although it could work very nicely if you're accompanying a small group of singers. Thank you very much for watching.